We're here in the Rose Department at Lurby Landscape Supply and Garden Center in Des Plaines. And in about six minutes or so, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about roses, so we better talk fast. Of course, we have the fastest talking woman in horticulture right here with us. The first item is sun. You need a place with your SPF 45, right? You need six hours of sun, and that means sunlight shining on the leaves of the rose. You can have morning sun, afternoon, but it has to be a cumulative of six hours. If you have less than that, you can try a rose, but look for roses that have fewer petals. It's called a low petal count. But for the best luck, put them in full sunshine. And don't cheat. We know you're going to try to cheat. Ventilation is also another important item. That is critical. Don't plant them too close to a building or a structure or too close to other plants. They need to have ventilation to prevent the, the major fungal diseases on them. Now, you also need well-drained soils, and if you live in the Chicago area, most of you have clay soil, so mm -hmm. how do you deal with that? You need to amend the soils with an organic matter, and usually two inches over the top, and dig it in before you plant the rows will be enough to modify, and then mulch it to keep that good organic matter. Now, if you want things simple, one of the best things you can do is get a rose that grows on its own roots, like this home run rose. I actually have one of these in my yard and mm. it's in full bloom right now and it's, it's fabulous. It's gorgeous. And what does that mean? What's the difference when we say own root? Many roses are grafted onto a hardy rootstock because they're not real hardy in our Chicago winters. And the newest trend is to grow them on their own roots. If we have a difficult winter and the, the top of the plant gets frozen back to the ground, the plant will come back true to its variety from the rootstock. Water deeply and infrequently. Absolutely. You want to make sure that the roots get very well hydrated. You don't want to water every day because that squeezes the oxygen out of the, out of the root system. So water infrequently, watch the rainfall. If we don't get an inch of rain a week, give them a good deep drink and water twice a week to prevent any transpiration stress. Fertilization. Now, you've heard this before that roses are heavy feeders. You want to make sure that you fertilize them at least once a month. Uh, this is a wonderful f rose fertilizer called Rose Tone. And what you do is you spread one cup per branch spread. Most roses are two to three feet. So you would spread two cups around the base of the plant, leave it for one month, and then do it again. And do that in May, June, and July, never after August the 1st. It's like giving someone espresso when they're supposed to get ready for bed. Another thing you want to do is mulch. And why do you want to have a mulch layer around your roses? Well, mulch will hold down the weeds. It also keeps the, the soil more uniformly um, moist, and it keeps it a more uniform temperature. So mulching, very important. Two inches all around the base of the plant. Stay away from the stem about three to four inches. Now, the other thing you want to do is keep your roses blooming all summer long, assuming that it's a rose that will do that, because some roses only bloom once and then they're done. Right. But if you've got a rose that's going to bloom more frequently, you need to deadhead. All right, and we have, I happen to have some pruners in my hot little hands here. You start at the, the finished flower and you follow it down to the first five leaflet leaf and prune one quarter of an inch above that. So you want to go here? Exactly. All right. And what that will do, that will generate a new, the bud that generates will have a new flower on it. If you only prune to a three leaflet leaf right here, right. it will be a vegetative branch. This looks like a three leaf. Oh, we didn't count right. Yeah, Go down okay. one more. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh -huh. Okay, perfect. We've got insect problems and disease problems, mm -hmm. that we, and roses tend to get some of these. The worst one are the Japanese beetles that will be coming around usually in July. You have a choice of a wonderful earth-friendly natural insecticide. This is made from canola oil and pyrethrin. Spray it on the, the insects and it will kill them on contact. There's also uh, a drench that is a systemic. That means that the active ingredient is absorbed by the roots. Very convenient. And something else you want to keep in mind is with Japanese beetles, uh, get the first flush of the beetle when they show up on your plant because they send out signals to their buddies and say, hey, the Eden's good here. So if you can get them off right away, they won't be able to send out that signal and you might have fewer uh, beetles on your plants. Absolutely. Now what about diseases? The other, the main disease oh. is um, black spot on the roses or rust. And we're seeing a lot of rust. 
the same controls will take care of both of those. And you have to understand, they get inoculated when the leaves are baby leaves. So start spraying to protect them because the, 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 the fungus gets into the leaf and shows up six to eight weeks later. So spray another earth-friendly natural is the three-in-one disease control. It's sulfur-based and spray it on. It will prevent the spores from germinating. And then we also have, if you have more than one or three to spray, get the hose-in version. This is the same formula. Hook it to the hose. You can spray all your plants once every seven to ten days. Keep them neat and tidy and disease-free. That's roses in a nutshell. Okay, next we're going to go to Pesci's Garden Center and we're going to talk about hydrangeas. And then later, we are going to Uncommon Ground Restaurant in the city of Chicago. Pick some veggies, put them in a fabulous dish. All coming up on Dig in Chicago.